Michigan Out of Doors Online is brought to you in part by by Red Wing Shoes, located in the shops at Centerpoint in Grand Rapids at the corner of 28th Street and the Beltline. The store has everything you need for the worksite or the woods. Stop in or check them out online at redwingshoes.com. And by Mr. Muskie Charters, offering full-service guided fishing trips for walleye, muskie, bass, and sturgeon on Lake St. Clair and the Detroit and St. Clair Rivers. Booking information is online at mrmuskiecharters.com. Hey everybody, welcome to Michigan Out of Doors. I'm Jenny olson Silik, and we've got a great show lined up for you this week. We're gonna kick it off with a father-daughter hunt. Over the weekend, I was able to spend some time in a blind with a nine-year-old girl and her dad as they tried to fill her very first deer tag on the youth season. You won't wanna miss that story. And Jimmy's been working on another exciting adventure for us this week too. Well, that's right, Jenny. We do have another story on this week's show. It's actually really a pretty cool one. It's part one in a two-part series that we're going to be doing over the next couple of weeks on Fred Bear. We're going to be looking at bear archery and the hunts of Fred Bear himself. You won't want to miss that. I think we're going to also have time for a bragging board on this week's show, so make sure you stay tuned. I'm Jimmy Gretzinger. It's time for Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze Dancing on the pine forest floor the autumn colors catch your eyes, here come the crystal winter skies. It's Michigan, Michigan out of doors. What a beautiful day in the woods. Someday our children all will see this is their finest legacy. The wonder and the love of Michigan as the wind comes whispering through the trees. The sweet smell of nature's in the air. Great Lakes to the quiet stream, shining like a sportsman's dream. It's a love of Michigan we all share. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by by Country Smokehouse, a sportsman's meat processor and Michigan destination since 1988. Offers a variety of homemade smoked meats and Michigan-made products in store and online. The Country Smokehouse features an outdoor barbecue and bar. Details at countrysmokehouse.com. By G5 Outdoors. Makers of the Quest and Prime bows, manufactured and designed in Memphis, Michigan. G5 offers a line of archery bows, broadheads, and accessories on the web at g5outdoors.com. By Hemisphere Design Works, a Muskegon manufacturer of sportsmen's outdoor products for over 30 years, featuring the terrain line of hard-sided hunting blinds designed for quick setup and removal with quiet operation. For more information and other products, hemispheredesignworks.com. Soaking in the rich tradition of Michigan hunting for over 30 years. Vanguard is proud to sponsor our friends at Michigan Out of Doors TV. For this year's youth deer season, I headed to the Sherwood Family Farm outside of Frankenmuth where Eric Sherwood and his girls were warming up for the afternoon hunt. Eric's dad, Dwayne, would be sitting with 12-year-old Charlie tonight and I'd be joining Eric and 9-year-old Bradley in their blind. Both of Eric's girls are already quite the outdoors women, and he takes them out in the woods whenever he has a chance. Well, the, the cool thing is the youth season. Um, when I was growing up, you had to be 14 years old to, to hunt, and now you can go out at, at almost any age, and um, so that's really great. And I've been taking the girls to the hunting blinds with me. We've, we've made these nice hunting blinds that are comfortable with seats and, and heaters so that I could I was able to bring the girls with me when they were at a very young age and watch the deer and watch the food plots and spend time with them in the woods, which is really cool. And it's not just deer, it's turkeys and woodchucks and eagles and, and all kinds of animals that we see. So it's uh, um, fun be, to be able to take your kids and go hunting with them. Charlie would be hunting with her trusty 410 that she's already taken three bucks with over the years. And Bradley would be using her crossbow for her very first deer hunt tonight. Both girls were excited to hit the woods. Okay, we're in Saginaw County between Frankenmuth and Saginaw, and um, we, we've got 55 acres there that's part of a 200 acre woods. And we, we do very little or no baiting at all, but we do a lot of food plots. Um, food plots with whitetail select seed. We've been doing that for several years, um, and, and we've increased the deer numbers on the property tremendously. Um, we've, we've shot a lot of large bucks, a lot of small bucks. We've, we take a, quite a few does each year, um, depending on the, the population. This year we, we figured we should take at least four or five does out of there. So. 
Bradley was really hoping for a shot at a buck for her very first deer hunt, but she decided if the time was right and a doe presented a shot, she would have no problem filling her tag on a doe either. As we got settled in, I had a minute to chat with Bradley. So, what do you like about hunting and hanging out with your dad? Well, a lot of quiet, so I don't have to be sitting with my sister all the time. Um, I get to see nature. I love nature. It's so pretty. Um, it's just really fun. Bradley and her dad were having fun out here right off the bat. They were hunting over a food plot that Eric had planted with Whitetail Select, which happens to be a seed mix he developed years ago. Eric says this time of year, the afternoon hunts are the best. So what we planned was an evening hunt because in the warmer months in September and especially early October, we usually see a lot more deer in the evening. So we did an afternoon hunt. Um, Charlie and my dad went to a, to a tower blind in the back over a small food plot and they saw some does and fawns as well. And we sat in the, uh, the front blind over a big food plot and we saw, gosh, what did we see? 15 to 20 does and fawns. So we saw a lot of activity. We didn't get to see any bucks with antlers, but um, we, we did get to see several does and fawns and, and three of them that came really close. Bradley had lots of deer moving through the food plot this evening, but so far nothing came within range for her crossbow. Well, Bradley was getting tired and, and getting disappointed, I think, as the, day, as the, the night wore on. Um, but then we saw, um, first it was one doe, then there was a second, and I think there was even a third. Uh, there was quite a bit of excitement there at the end, so I'm not even sure what was going on. But there were actually deer in three or four corners of the food plot all around us, but they were further away. But as these two or three does started moving close, we were trying to decide which one was bigger. And, um, and Bradley said she definitely wanted to shoot one, and they, they were so close to the hunting blind. We had Bradley's chair set up to where she could easily shoot at a, a 25 to 40 yard shot, and these deer were so close and, and almost underneath of the hunting blind that she had to move the chair back and stand up to get the right angle out the window. So that was a little bit of a chore, but we, we were able to get, get that uh, accomplished, and. And all I had to do was grunt at the deer a little bit to get it to stop, and she was able to, to do the job after that, so. Oh, oh my gosh. I do it again. Did I get it? Yeah. <laughs> I think I got it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so excited. Tell me what. Well, it was really close, and I didn't know. I don't think I would get her, but I was kind of nervous. I just switch. I didn't like pull it slowly, but I got her. Did you have to wait till she came out? Tell me about how she was walking. And well, stuff. she was sitting, or she was just standing over there, and then she slowly walked around here, and then she was like right about there when I shot her, and then she ran out there, and then she was like laying down over there by the brush. <laughs> What do you think, Dad? I think she did a great job. <laughs> she, she's all the practice and hard work. She's done perfect. And I think she's excited. <laughs> Good I, shoot. I think you've got a little bit of adrenaline running through you right now. Let's see your hand. Hold your hand up. <laughs> so that? now we're going to have to put your name up on the wall of the hunting blind here. Yeah. yeah. Yep. As Bradley made it official, documenting her first deer, Eric filled me in on the next step of their plan. Well, now we've got a doe down, and I've, I've gotten a hold of my friend Bill Zender, and he's going to bring out his, his uh, dachshund wiener dog to track it for us. And even though we know where the deer is, this is good work for his little dog Fritz, and I'm pretty sure he wants to bring his dog out anyway to have his Fritz track the deer for us. And I think Bradley wants to see Fritz too. Yeah. So, I think Bradley wants to see her deer, too. Yeah, I definitely do. <laughs> so Bill Zender and his deer tracking dog Fritz were out here honing their skills. Fritz is just 18 months old, and Bill likes to get him out and get more experience under his belt whenever he can. Bill likes to carry Fritz out to the spot where the deer was shot and let him take it from there. 
Bradley's perfectly placed shot made a nice blood trail for Fritz to follow, and he was off to find her first deer for her. Beautiful. There you go, Fritz. All right. Bradley, what do you think? So where did you hit Pretty. Where did you hit him? Bradley's doe was tagged and many pictures were taken to commemorate this day that will no doubt be relived in the Sherwood family home for many years to come. Congratulations to Bradley on a great hunt. Special thanks to Eric, Grandpa Dwayne, and all the parents and grandparents out there who go the extra mile during youth season, keeping this great tradition alive here in Michigan's Out of Doors. For bow hunters here in the state of Michigan and around the world, very few people, if any, have meant more to the sport than Fred Bear. So as we prepare for another archery season here in Michigan, we're going to take a look back at the history of bear archery and the life of Fred Bear. A few weeks back, I had the opportunity to sit down with someone who collects Fred Bear and bear archery memorabilia. The goal was to learn not only more about Fred Bear, but also about how bear archery was started and how it progressed throughout the years. I started collecting bear archery stuff probably in the early 90s. Um, I've always liked old stuff, um, but I went to a, I, I got wind of a show that, uh, a traditional show that was pretty close to here uh, in, in Heartland. So I thought I'm gonna take a ride over there and see what that's all about and went and I saw guys making bows out of Osage staves with spoke shaves and saw a booth. A guy had a couple of old bear recurves for sale and I always liked Indians and, and the old ways. I thought, man, that'd be, I was into bow hunting. I just started bow hunting with a compound, but um, I saw that recurve and thought, man, that'd be really be the way to go bow hunting. So I bought that recurve and started shooting it and got some old, old arrows and that pretty much kind of got me interested in Fred Bear and bear archery and started learning about them and then I just, anywhere I went, I, I started picking up bear archery stuff, whether it was online, and I think that was, I didn't even have a computer at that time, so I was chasing, you know, chasing numbers down, or you'd talk to people that, oh, I had an uncle that I think he's got an old bow or something, and started picking stuff up, and uh, that's kind of what got me into the never thinking I was going to be a collector, but after a while, I had all this stuff and realized that I, I love sharing it with people. I didn't want to just have it to just have it. I enjoyed it, but I wanted other people to enjoy it too that had the same interest. John has an incredible collection of items related to bear archery, including a few of them from when the company was just getting started and was still located in Detroit all the way back in the 1930s. We're probably at the earliest uh, part of bear archery when they started out in Detroit. Um, this is some items that would have been made in Detroit, leather goods, bat quivers, um, they made these little perches, these purses or little pouches, little game pouches you could put your gear in. And this was uh, Fred Bear's first boyer in Detroit. Nels Gromley is a fantastic bow maker. These are some of uh, Nels's bows. This is a, what's called a bush bow. Just a beautiful piece of work. Um, this was a bear product, so this was before um, it became bear archery. This was the earliest bows that they offered to the public. And, um, that's Nels Grumley here, Fred Bear, and a couple other guys. They were bow hunting up in St. Helen, Michigan area. And this is a picture of Fred Bear and a group of archers during Michigan's first bow and arrow season in 1937 up near St. Helen. This is Fred Bear in 1945 with his first moose that he ever shot. And in 1946, that's Fred with his first black bear he ever shot. And he's using a, a Grumley deer slayer in both pictures, and that's this bow basically, not this particular bow, but this model, um, Deer Slayer bow, with uh, the bow quiver, and, and this bow quiver actually too I meant to mention, Fred Bear patented in 1946, I believe. This was a, a bow quiver that attached to the bow, as you can see in, in the pictures, and held three arrows. So that was something that, that Fred uh, patented. And this was basically the arrow that Fred used to, sh to shoot those. It's a a four blade Zwicky broadhead on a cedar arrow. This was the top of the line pretty much back then and what Fred used to take both of those animals. And these are some of the first bows that were being made at Bear Archery after the move to Grayling. These are called transition era bows, still a deer slayer bow, but this has fiberglass backing on it now. This was 
um, a short period between when Nels Grumley left bear archery and they started mass producing, so probably around 1948. And then in the 1950, they came out with the Kodiak bow, which again, very similar to the old deer slayer bows with the static tip built up brush knocks on the end. This also has a layer of aluminum in it, and that aluminum was acquired from Fred's friend, Glenn St. Charles. He got it, it was uh, salvaged from old World War II bombers, and Glenn worked out a deal with the government to get some of this aluminum, and they started using it in the production of some of these bows, but unfortunately, they didn't have a lot of luck with the aluminum laminate, uh, glue process with the wood, so they discontinued that. But this is an early 1950 era Kodiak static recurve bow. And then in 1954, Bear Archery got their patent, Canadian patent, for a full working recurve. And this is one of the first models of Bear's working, full working recurve, the Kodiak II, or it's often referred to as the Compass Kodiak because it came with a small compass embedded in the handle. So Fred kind of thought of everything there. If you're out in the woods, you've got your, you, you don't have to worry about remembering your compass as long as you have your bow. Just a few examples of some of the early bear archery arrow boxes, um, the end plate on some of them just to show how they changed over the years, the bear archery shop at Detroit. And then you had these just plain cardboard and with their label. And then these are some that maybe some of the, some of the older guys like myself might remember having from the 60s, 50s, 60s, and 70s. But this is a real nice example of a dozen 1956 bear arrows with the, the first bear razor head on it that was offered to, for sale to the public in 1956. So just a real nice set of cedar arrows. And um, here we have some stuff from Grouse Haven. That was where Fred really loved to, to hunt and spend time in Michigan, even after he had moved to Florida. He loved to come back and, and be with friends at uh, Grouse Haven. So these are just some, some memorabilia from there. Some of the, the bow quivers, you can see the progression throughout the years. They started out with this three arrow scabbard quiver, was one of the earlier ones, and then eventually they went to a, a four arrow with a hood that covered the whole broadhead so you didn't have to worry about getting cut. Um, they kind of made that a little bit more safe. And then eventually went to, this was another model, the spring arm that mounted on the bow, and this was a four arrow model and this inside the box there is an eight arrow model. You could have eight arrows if you needed. And then these are some of the bear razor heads. Those were very, very popular broad heads that uh, they, at one time at least, they claimed killed more big game animals than any broad head in the world. And this is actually one of the very earliest ones that was made in 1955. Uh, Fred had about 300 of these made and gave to his hunting friends to use and he wanted to see how they liked them and he got a lot of them back, but they're very rare head, but this is actually one of the earliest bear razor heads that eventually turned into these little green ones that we see here, and a lot of guys still, traditional archers, love to shoot the old bear green razor head, so they were really a very popular head. These are some early examples of, of uh, the, the takedown bow that Fred, in my opinion, that was Fred's crowning moment. He, he had always wanted a, a takedown bow, and of course this is their earliest version of takedown that they came up with in Detroit in 19, Fred Bear patented this in 1946, I believe. This was a takedown bow that came apart with a latch like that, but eventually Fred wanted something that really required no tools to take apart. These are a couple real early uh, pieces that before they were finished, but just to show you kind of how these were made and uh, they were slotted and these these limb sockets were glued into place. Um, so this is one that's a little bit more finished and still, although these were mass produced, there was still a lot of this work and the shaping was done by hand by, by craftsmen on, on sanders and equipment. So really a lot of know-how and feel went into making these bows and this eventually became this and this is a sea riser and the sockets that you can see in there. But these are really unique. These are some very early pre-production takedown bows that uh, were made before they were offered to the public. These were made to be taken to uh, one of the shot shows to show the public what's, what's new and upcoming at Bear Archery. So, um, and this is kind of how the public could have bought something. It had a nice little takedown case. 
the limbs came apart. This was the beautiful part about this that Fred loved, is it required no tools. These latches just popped open. You, could, you had three different length handles, as you can see here. We had the, a, the C handle, the B handle, the A handle, which was the shortest. The C was the largest. This is a B handle, but you also had three different length limbs. And these limbs could fit in any one of these risers. And that just clicked in there and you would put the bottom limb in and you had yourself a hunting bow at pretty much whatever length and these limbs could be um, could come in any several different weights. You could have lightweight limbs for target shooting or for youngsters or the ladies and you could put heavier weight limbs in for hunting. So it really was a fantastic idea and required no tools at all and that was really what Fred wanted uh, ultimately and, and that's they're still being made today at Bear Archery and it's still a very popular popular bow. All right and these are um, these are just some of a few examples of some of the bows that came out of Bear Archery. Um, this is a very unique one in the fact that it's a 123 pound recurve. Uh, I don't know who the bow was made for but it, as far as I know it's the heaviest bear recurve that I know of uh, in existence. It's just uh, just huge. Whoever shot that must have been quite an animal or thought he was quite an animal. Um, so that's a unique bow. Here's one uh, takedown bow like we had shown earlier that Fred had signed to a gentleman that was one of his salesmen. So just a beautiful, beautiful bow. Um, these are very collectible still today and still very shootable. But just a beautiful, beautiful bow. Ultimately in 1975 Bear Archery cataloged and came out with their first compound bow. This was the Alaskan, um, and that was Bear's first compound bow, and Fred never really could shoot a compound bow because of his shooting style. He was a snap shooter. When he pulled that string back and hit anchor, he let the arrow fly, and the compound bow was just very awkward for Fred to shoot. So although he sold them and they were very popular, he could never really get comfortable shooting one. And this was the Tamerlane II, which was... Uh, another one of the first compound bows that Bear Archery offered to the public in 1975. So you can see we've come a long way even with the compound bow of today compared to 1975. This is Fred Bear's personal takedown bow that he used probably up until he died. Um, and as you can see by the little sign up here maybe, um, Fred signed this bow to himself kind of as a joke. Fred was always signing things for people and signing bows and signing pictures. So this was kind of Fred's sense of humor where he signed his own bow to himself. But this was Fred's personal personal hunting bow and you can see how he cut this arrow shelf down very low. Fred liked to have the arrow sit right on top of his hand. Kind of how he started out shooting the old long bows back in the 20s where there was no arrow shelf. So Fred always like to have the arrow as close to his hand as he could so he had his bows, personal bows, shaved down so that arrow sat down low on his hand. Make sure to tune in next week for part two of this series as we get to see some actual footage of Fred Bear hunting and learn a little bit more about his life. I am a Michigan man Changing seasons paint the scene Like rainbow trout in a hidden stream The white-tailed deer in the tall pine trees I am a Michigan man I am, I am a Michigan man That's where I'm from and I'll show you my hands Lord above, I love this land I am a St. Joe, Kalamazoo, East to Monroe, to St. Marie and back again. I am a Michigan man. I am, I am a Michigan man. That's where I'm from and I'll show you my hands. Lord above, I love this land. I am a Michigan man.
Thanks for joining us this week for Michigan Out of Doors. We've got a lot of exciting adventures headed your way on the TV show here this fall with all the hunting seasons happening. Lots of great fall fishing as well. So make sure you stay tuned in the upcoming weeks here on Michigan Out of Doors. If you'd like to know where we are or where we're headed next, you can always check us out online too. Well, online is a great way to keep track of us. You can always check us out on our website at michiganoutofdoorstv.com. We have full episodes of the show there every week and lots of other good stuff. If you want to follow us on social media, we're on several of the different platforms and you can kind of see what we're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. And if you do the YouTube thing, you can actually subscribe to our channel and then every time we post something new, you get an email sent right to you. Lots of good stuff coming over the next several weeks. If we don't see it in the woods or on the water, hopefully we'll see it right back here next week on your PBS station. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by by Greenstone Farm Credit Services, making recreational land ownership possible across Michigan and Northeast Wisconsin. Begin your land financing journey at one of Greenstone's 37 locations or greenstonefcs.com. By the locally owned and operated members of the Michigan Petroleum Association and the National Oil Heat Research Alliance, who provide oil heat with bioheat, a renewable fuel source designed to benefit the home and the environment. Details on the web at useoilheatmichigan.com. By AnglerQuest Pontoons, a mid-Michigan company building boats for fishermen by fishermen. AnglerQuest Pontoons are designed for comfort and functionality. On the web at anglerquestpontoons.com. Closed captioning provided by Marvo Mineral, makers of Lucky Buck, deer management products including minerals to supplement deer diets year-round to improve health and antler growth. When I want to fire away, a dream stays with me night and day. It's the road that leads to my home state. I am a Michigan man. Changing seasons paint the scene like rainbow trout in a hidden stream. The white-tailed deer in the tall pine trees. I am a Michigan man. I am, I am a Michigan man. That's where I'm from and I'll show you my hands. Lord above.